Welcome to rebuilding a Bernac Vulcan model steam engine toy. Part 10. Dismantling the old boiler and making a new improved boiler battle. If you've been following this series you will be aware that the boiler is not in a serviceable condition. Why is this? Well it's over 70 years old and the solder is not so good and I just wouldn't trust it under pressure even though the pressure is quite low. The thread in the safety valve bush is quarter BSF, so I've screwed a quarter BSF allen bolt into the hole. Now all I need to do is heat everything up. In no time at all, the safety valve bush comes loose from the boiler. Now it's time to heat the boiler battle to raise the temperature of the entire thing so that all of the soft solder melts. This didn't take long and the top cap was very easy to remove as was the centre flue, that just fell out. I never did like soft-soldered boilers. I remember the main steam pipe coming out of the boiler of a Mammoth TE-1 that I had as a child, because the solder melted. And I remember vividly the dreadful soldering iron repair that was done by a local model shop. Everything's loose on this boiler now, so it's time to cool it down in order to continue working on it. I have to be very careful not to get obsessed with this job. In fact, after this episode, I'm going to put this on one side because I have too much work on. I don't make a living by making these videos. I make a living by repairing miniature steam engines and working in my recording studio. Although part of my living does come from my kind Patreon supporters, then of course there is the advertising on YouTube, which is not very much. Here I'm doing something very wrong, I'm using one hammer to hit another hammer, you should not do this. The metal that hammer heads are made from can shatter if you do this, so don't do it. Why am I doing this anyway, you might be thinking, well I'm just flattening off the top plate to see what it looks like. I only hit the hammer with the hammer to illustrate the fact that you shouldn't do it. This is how I would normally remove dents from things. Light hammer blows, and plenty of them, is the order of the day. And in no time at all, the top cap was flat. The top cap is now looking a good bit flatter, although the hammer, when I think about it, is a bit too heavy for the job. I'd like to mention at this stage that I'm not going to reuse this top cap, but I'm showing an alternative method of repairing it, should anybody want to follow it. After flattening the cap, it's time to remove all the excess solder. And for this I recommend a wire brush. It's much better than a brush that isn't made from wire. Just to prove the point, watch this. You're watching one of the ecologically friendly toothbrushes that I bought. But really it's not very ecologically friendly because the bristles are made out of nylon and in no time at all it turns into an inferno. The handles of these toothbrushes are made from bamboo and the packaging was recycled paper, but the bristles are made from a plastic material. I don't quite get this. And the online advert gave you the impression they were very green indeed, but I don't think nylon is that green. I certainly wouldn't dream of using this boiler barrel. Two reasons. It's a bit on the thin side. It's a very thin gauge. And the other reason is it's got holes in the wrong place that need plugging up. By the time I've done all that, apart from it wouldn't look too good, I may as well make a brand new barrel. Here I'm using a pencil held in place on top of the old boiler barrel to make a mark on a piece of 16 gauge, 2.5 inch outside diameter copper tube. I then cut the piece to length using my bandsaw. But both edges of the tube were rough and needed turning down. Luckily, I have a Smart and Brown model 1024 fitted with a four-jaw self-centering chuck. And because this is a four-jaw chuck with large jaws and a very large hole down the centre, I can put most of the tube in place and turn it just like this. If I was using a smaller lathe, I would have to make some sort of a jig. I would need a solid plug at one end, where the copper tube was held in the jaws, and at the other end, a specially shaped piece of metal with a centre hole drilled in it for a life centre to hold everything rigid. But thankfully, with this chuck being what it is, it's rigid anyway. You will note though, I'm not taking really deep cuts and most of the cuts are coming back towards me because it puts less pressure on the work. 
I'd just like to mention, by the way, that I am far from stupid. And what you're about to see, I staged very carefully for the video. Notice the tool is still in position, and notice how close my hand is to the sharp part. I even very carefully touched the sharp point a bit, on more than one occasion as I reversed the part in the chuck. Lathes can be dangerous even when they're not rotating. Always make sure you move the cutting tool well out of the way, or better still, remove it from the holder when your hands are going to be near it, and then refit it before the next turning operation. With modern quick change tool posts and tool holders, this is really simple to do. Once I cleaned up the edge, I used a file on the outside and one of these deburring tools on the inside. You need to run the lathe slowly when you use the deburring tool, or even just rotate the deburring tool. As it turns out, I hadn't gone right down to the pencil line, so here I'm completing the job, and once I'd done this, I refiled it and re deburred it. And before the filing and deburring, I moved the cutting tool well out of the way. I haven't mentioned the fact, but it is obvious the file needs to have a handle, as does the deburring tool. Now the end of the tube is not sharp in any way, and it's perfectly square. I don't mean the tube's square, I mean the edges are at 90 degrees. Here's a comparison. The piece of copper tube on the left is 16 gauge, and it's a good bit thicker than the piece of copper tube that was originally the boiler shell. At some stage in the construction, preferably before it's been heated to red and annealed, I will need to use a boring tool in the lathe to reduce the internal diameter so it fits on the base. Here's the old boiler barrel with the base sat on the bench. I won't have to reduce the internal diameter by very much, just a tiny little bit, where it sits on the base. Although before I do that, I'm going to try the base on the piece of 16 gauge copper, because here it looks like the base is a bit smaller than the original shell. The main thing is, both of these boiler barrels are exactly the same length. When I make this new boiler, for the top cap and tube plate I'm going to use gun metal, not brass and the centre flue will be slightly thicker copper tube. What I will have to do though is transfer the hole positions from the old boiler barrel to the new one, and also I will need to duplicate the shape of the cutout where the burner goes. I could do it like this by marking the positions with a pencil, but I have a far simpler idea which involves a piece of paper and some sellotape. I'll show that in the next episode. For now though, I do have some more pressing jobs to get on with. Before I go, I will show you the current state of the flywheel. It's still not brilliant and I think I'm going to redo it. I don't like it looking like this. It's such a rough piece of aluminium. I don't want to make a new one though. I'd like to keep some of the parts original. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.